He forgotten there. I expect some strong language. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, in Islington, after a summer of negative headlines about anti-Semitism, Jeremy Corbyn finally gives the Jewish Chronicle an in-depth interview. Good morning. Nice to see you. Goodbye. <laughs> a BBC journalist reacts to the news that male presenters are still paid far more than their female counterparts. The Kennel Club admits that it has raised the qualification standards for this year's Crufts. <laughs> <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is a political journalist who, on her breakfast show, greets viewers as they wake up in the morning. Unlike me on Pointless, who greets viewers as they wake up in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, please welcome Naga Manchetti. And with Paul tonight is a comedian who went to a small rural school in the heart of Devon where he learnt the three R's. R. <laughs> Please welcome Josh Winnicombe. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Naga, take a look at this. Oh, it's the Prime Minister, or it was when we went out. <laughs> There she is. Oh, not such fancy footwork there. Where There's... are the fields of wheat? Um, <laughs> um, it's the world's most famous misprint. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Tory conference. Mm -hmm. It was. Which was big news, because Mrs May made a speech and it wasn't terrible. <laughs> which is absolutely riveting. But she stole the show elsewhere, didn't she, obviously, with the dancing. You like the dancing? I loved the dancing. But... I'm not a great one to judge, I'll put that out there well, straight away. Well, I was going to say, you've been on Strictly. <laughs> exactly, I'm and not a great one to judge. Well, you lasted four weeks. Just. Well, that may be what she's going for. <laughs> <laughs> Have I missed the news that Theresa May is on Strictly? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, she danced onto the podium. Oh, to Dancing Queen. Shall we just... Oh, yes, please. I think we Shall need we? a look. It's Mama May. <laughs> <laughs> It was possible to walk out of step. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> it's an astonishing move she's got. Yeah. Mm. It's she's like great... she's moving a fridge, isn't it? And <laughs> <laughs> um, what did May pledge to end? <laughs> that dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, austerity's yeah. over. The end of austerity. Exactly. Yes. Indeed. Well, I'm glad they told us. <laughs> the <obvious laughs> otherwise you'd have to guess and, yeah. and looking around it's quite hard to spot yeah. biggest national debt ever in history it's over so forget about it, it doesn't matter, it's gone and that last ten years, I hope you're happy because <laughs> it was all worth it it's over she said the British people need to know that the end is in sight I mean, blimey, it can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May reassured the people Britain's best days lie ahead. What, when Corbyn gets in? <laughs> uh, speaking of Jeremy Corbyn, how did his dancing at the Labour Party conference measure up? Oh, I imagine it was better. Well, well after his speech, all the Tory press went into complete panic. Because it wasn't terrible. Yeah. And they had no idea how to react. Oh, no, you're meant to be useless. <laughs> Let's have a look. Here's him dancing. Mm. Everybody was out apart from him. <laughs> 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 no, 
amazing. <laughs> Theresa May wasn't the only politician to try and inject a bit of humour into her speech at the conference. Uh, did anyone see Sajid Javid's zinger? I always like these, but I didn't see it. Is, 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 yeah, that, is it up to the usual standard? It is good. Have a look at this. Kapow. I know the question that's on your mind. So let's just deal with it now, up front. Yes, I did watch The Bodyguard. <laughs> no, it wasn't very realistic. For a start, my code name is not Lavender. <laughs> and she didn't even do the power stance. Oh. <laughs> that was four bad ones in a row. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that could kill most careers yeah. in comedy. <laughs> you see the sign there? Well, the last year all the letters fell off. When I'm reading it, I keep seeing pity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Boris Johnson tried to upstage the Prime Minister. How did he go about that? Well, he had his own side show, didn't he? He did. Lots and lots of cues. Yes. How many people were there? There were a thousand. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. That said, many people yeah, turn up. Absolutely right. Well, that's not going to get him in. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Guardian reported that in order to see Boris's speech, delegates queued for up to four hours. Unbelievable. Well, that's the level of support he's got. I don't want to be disrespectful to Boris's speech, but I think perhaps he should see a therapist, because throughout, <laughs> throughout you just kept hearing these words like betrayal, trust, <laughs> loyalty, cheat. <laughs> cheat! <laughs> Four weeks ago he got thrown out the house and the locks changed. <laughs> <laughs> Boris. <laughs> what is Boris trying to do here, do we think? Dispose of a body? <laughs> well, he was running, wasn't he? Yeah, but we don't know away from who. <laughs> well, why do we always see him jogging in shorts? Can he, he can't yeah. remember where he left his trousers. <laughs> also, why hasn't he lost any weight? Why hasn't he lost any weight? <laughs> <laughs> he's always jogging or on a bike. Is he trying to do a parody? I think he's... I think he is. Yes. I think he is, yes. Theresa May said, isn't it, the only naughty thing she could think that she'd done was um, sneak into a field of wheat. Run she through. Was run, th run through, yes, yeah. with gay abandon. And he's impersonating that. Yes. So does she have to do the naughty things that he's done? <laughs> <laughs> Bad news for Philip May. <laughs> Back to Boris. Did, did you hear his speech? God, it was bad. <laughs> he at one point said there's a 14th century law and that the government should be prosecuted under primuneri. And everyone went, oh, marvellous, Boris. It's not true. It was repealed in 1967. <laughs> Just another lie. The only good thing about this one is he didn't put it on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Boris isn't the only person upset with how Brexit is being handled by the government. Have a look at this woman marching against Brexit on the <laughs> Channel 4 News. Why are you here? I don't trust the politicians. They're full of egos. They're, they're, they're just rubbish, basically. What are you Can't stand the uncertainty and the chaos. It's absolutely appalling. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got no problem with her ego, is she? <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice beret. Wasn't she in a lower low? <laughs> In other policy news, though, yeah, what policy did news. Theresa May announce this week to help the UK celebrate and revel in a, in a post-Brexit world? We're going to have a festival. <laughs> That's oh, wonderful. Yes. Yes. Festival of Brexit. Yes. That's it, yes. Like the Festival of Britain. That's right. She's announced plans to put £120 million aside to showcase the best the country has to offer in business, technology, arts and sport. It's going to be called The Festival. <laughs> That, already, already showcasing the talent we have. But what, what's it celebrating? The talent we have. <laughs> Our ability to put on a festival. Coloured tents with stripes all down the side. Lovely. And ABBA. ABBA? Oh. Just going to point out that ABBA aren't the best that we have to offer. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Can we just bring in things from Europe? This is what we're missing. <laughs> And uh, well, let's not forget the Lib Dems um, and Vince. You have. Uh, no, I, we remember them in the nick of time. Yes. Vince Cable, what was his major triumph at the Lib Dem conference? Still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the party or just him? <laughs> He's going to outlive the party. 
he had a joke, and it was leaked to the press. Yes. So we knew what the joke was, and this is what they do now. They say the leader will say. So then you wait for it, and then they mess it up. He got his spin doctors to yes. prepare the nation for the great put-down he was going to deliver yes. to hard Brexiteers. When he came to it, he couldn't quite sell the phrase uh. erotic spasm. <laughs> erotic spasm. Here's what he said. For the true believers, the, the, the fundamentalists, the costs of Brexit have always been irrelevant. Years of economic pain justified by the exotic spasm. <laughs> Get any warning of what they're about to say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, this is Theresa May's third Tory conference as Prime Minister. Take that, Paddy Power. <laughs> After Theresa May danced her way onto the stage, the Daily Mail reported for once she had the audience laughing with her, not at her. Actually, it was mainly nervous laughter because most of the people were worried that their rectums would never unclench. <laughs> According to the Daily Mirror, Plymouth University <laughs> Conservatives caused outrage by going out to a bar with one of them sporting a Hitler moustache and wearing anti-Semitic messages on a T-shirt. They've now been suspended by the Conservative Party and warmly welcomed by the Labour Party. <laughs> Former head of the CBI, Digby Jones, attacked Boris Johnson for recently making the remark, fuck business. And, of course, fuck business is normally what Boris has scheduled in completed... <laughs> 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 Josh, take a look at this. It's always been a lovely place to visit. Oh. Um, 123 metres, that spire. Yeah. <laughs> the Russians there, and there's Putin, of course. Um, there's nothing about it at all. But what if they are just two guys who have had a shit holiday? <laughs> He'd be on TripAdvisor, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now, let me get this right. The guy that they poisoned was a guy called Skipple. Yep. And the airport that they travel to in Amsterdam is called Schiphol. So, is this indicating that the Russians are out to get people who have names that sound like airports? <laughs> <laughs> like, it should stand stead, be worried. <laughs> Awful news for JFK. JFK, yeah, or, yeah. or, or, or Luton. <laughs> <laughs> or G.A. Twick. <laughs> That's Gatling, by the way. Yeah. G.A. Twick. <laughs> Heathrow. Yes. Are we going to go through them all? I, I, <laughs> If, if, he, if, if there was a bloke called Heath Road, he went to Russia, it could be Terminal 4 Heath Road. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what is the latest on Sergei Skripal? Putin described him as a scumbag. That's right, uh, yeah. They don't really care about getting caught, though, do they? No. Putin's kind of just admitted it. Now. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how bad the excuse is. No. I mean, two middle-aged men with cropped hair, very thick set, saying, we're great admirers of the cathedral city of Salisbury. You think, no, you're not really. Well, didn't they go one day and they said they had to leave because it was a bit too cold for them? Yeah, yeah. there was a lot of slush, which they weren't used to in Russia. No. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. the, the poisoning, the Russian ambassador was asked about um, diplomatic relations between Britain and Russia, and he said, they've become rather poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's auditioning for a Bond film now. <laughs> Why didn't they just shoot him in the head? Sorry, what? You know, they got, I mean... <laughs> I didn't expect that was... from the host of Pointless. <laughs> well, no, I just... <laughs> Why did they go to all these lengths? I mean, if they really don't care what we think. I think it's, fierce, it's more exciting, isn't it? I yeah. suppose, yeah. How do Russian security services contemptuously refer to the two spies? The two spies? The two on... spies, the, the, the would-be assassins. The, uh, the yeah. would-be assassins. Um... Soon to be dead. According to the Times, <laughs> they're known as Dolce and Gabbana in Russian spy <laughs> circles because of the suggestion by a TV interviewer that they appeared to be two gay men on holiday. <laughs> the editor of Russia Today, uh, Margarita Samonyan, who interviewed them, tweeted after the interview, I don't know if they're gay or not gay. They're so stylish with their beards and haircuts and tight pants. <laughs> they didn't come on to me. <laughs> Definitely gay then, Margarita. <laughs> uh, what else is likely to emerge this week? Uh, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else is likely to emerge? We are likely to discover the, the identity of the second Russian assassin. Oh, are we? Oh. Yeah. And how do we know this? A website called Bellingcat. That is exactly right. Um, how did Elliot Higgins, who's the founder of Bellingcat, how did he identify Colonel Chapiga? That's the first... He met Russian. him in a gay club in Salisbury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he found an old photo of him in a 
Yes. Uh, uh, graduation. That's exactly right, yeah. He found a spy's secret service record on public websites. He said, I've looked at a lot of ears in photographs and I've never seen anything so distinctive. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Elliot Higgins is pretty cool for somebody who has probably severely narked the Russians. He told the Observer that the Russians are pretty incompetent. If a black van pulls up and four Russian guys leap out, there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do, so I try not to worry about it too much. <laughs> the good news for Elliot is former Russian FSB colonel has admitted that his security services aren't up to scratch. We do have a problem with the professionalism of our intelligence recruits, uh, so if there are any Russian hitmen watching uh, Elliot, we can reveal, looks like this. <laughs> Do you want to leave that photo off just a little bit longer in case anyone missed it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how is the leader of the other great superpower shaping up this week? What did, what did Donald Trump say was one of the best things about him? Well, he doesn't drink beer and his father didn't pay any taxes at any point. Um, so his myth of being a self-made American millionaire is not true. Which is extraordinary. I'm suggesting the President of the US is lying. But um, <laughs> he does appear to have made it all up from almost birth. Let's have a look. I'm just saying, I'm not a drinker. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? Right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever they're looking for something good, I say, I never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. I've just, you know, for whatever reason. Can you imagine if I had what a mess I'd be? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best advert for drinking I've ever seen. <laughs> I think they should play that all the time. Uh, Brett Kavanagh, meanwhile, had this to say this week. Drinking beer, which I gladly do and which I fully embrace. I liked beer. I still like beer. There we are. Well, there's the other side, then. Um, the Republicans want him to be in the Supreme Court. But uh, I think Trump has decided that he should be the judge. Because uh, he now addresses rallies and decides on people's innocence. And he just, he, he had a rally and said that the woman who gave evidence against him, I mean, there's, there's an investigation, they had a hearing, but Trump's decided that he knows. So he took the piss out of her at a rally, saying she's lying. And given that he's usually lying, that's a sort of odd double negative. So you start thinking, well, maybe she isn't, <laughs> even if you thought she was. Anyway, we'll know soon, because the FBI will tell us. Uh, so, yes, this is the continuing fallout from the Salisbury poisoning. The so-called assassins claim they were innocent tourists fulfilling a lifelong dream to visit Salisbury Cathedral, presumably inspired by that traditional children's rhyme, here's the church, here's the steeple, don't touch that door, it's Mr Screeple. <laughs> Talking of dangerous knobs, according to the time, <laughs> US Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh has faced snowballing allegations. Uh, complaining about the accusations against Kavanaugh, Donald Trump said it's a very scary time for young men in America when you can be guilty of something you may not be guilty of. You don't say, said 40 million black Americans. <laughs> and so to round two and the picture spin quiz. So fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Ah, yes, Paul and Josh. This is the beluga well that's somewhere near Gravesend, making his way up the Thames, perhaps. It's still out there. Seems to be feeding all right. Um, people are staying away from it because it's not really his normal habitat. Uh, he's more of a Dagenham. Uh, <laughs> <well. laughs> Where's it supposed to be? The Antarctic. Uh, Arctic? The, uh, the same place. Thousands of miles away. <laughs> <laughs> In the Arctic. Yeah, conservation <laughs> expert. That's where Shackleton went wrong. That's where he went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he went wrong. But he's on his way because he's... Some of his friends have said that Salisbury is lovely. So yeah. We've got to go look at a cathedral. Yeah. <laughs> uh, conservation expert Julia Cable yeah. said it's possible that it lost its way and has taken a wrong turn. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are they going to get him out of there? He's fine. At oh, conservation, you say, just let him be and let nature understand. take its course. He, there's okay. no plan B. It's very okay. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of British policy now. <laughs> yeah, we've got to whale up the Thames, so what? See what happens. <laughs> Is he a skilled whale? Because then he'll be allowed to stay. <laughs> can, can he pick fruit? <laughs> <laughs> Sticking with polar creatures, how are Telford Zoo dealing with a shortage of penguins? Oh, they've all dressed up as penguins. No, they've replaced them Plastic with, penguins. with models, exactly. There we go. Plastic penguins there. Is pattern. this to encourage them to mate? 
How can you mate with a stone penguin? <laughs> well, I'm thinking off the top of my head, maybe it's encouraging competition. So, of all the penguins we're seeing there, how many are genuine? None. None of those penguins None of those genuine. are genuine. So apparently there is a shortage of penguins throughout Europe and the zoo needs six humbled penguins, so they bought some plastic ones from a model shop in Devon. <laughs> That's a bit of a rip-off. You can't You go look. to a zoo and everything's yeah. plastic. Well, I know, but this is particularly embarrassing for Telford Zoo because uh, they've just spent 60,000 quid on their new penguin enclosure. What? Yeah. What's happened to their penguins? Well, apparently, according to the zoo owner, penguins only mate once a year, so unless we put models in, we've got to sit back and let nature take its course. But there's no penguins there <laughs> to mate in the first place! No. <laughs> How has the BBC managed to save roughly a million pounds a year this week? Oh, no, bad news, Nagger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it well, wasn't me. Is that on Chris Evans's salary? It is exactly oh, yeah. on Chris Evans's. They're replacing fabulous Chris Zoe Ball. Evans with fabulous mm. Zoe Ball. She's going to be the new host of the BBC Radio 2 breakfast show. This is how the BBC News broke the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the news that a beluga whale has set up home in the River Thames. <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, Benny's gender is not known. I'm no marine biologist. Surely you can, you can see the cock on a whale, can't you? <laughs> According to The Guardian, within two hours of the animal being spotted, it was being chased by TV helicopter crews overhead. And the whale was asking for the number of Cliff Richards, lawyer. That <laughs> uh, is on Buzz's scenes. <laughs> this is a physicist. Yes. At CERN, who said that the history of physics was largely created by men. He implied that women weren't very good at physics, but nowadays there were so many women getting jobs in physics that men couldn't get a job. I didn't really follow his argument. Do you remember what his name was, the, the professor? Idiot. <laughs> his name was Professor <laughs> Alessandro <laughs> Strumia from the CERN laboratory project. That's part of the, the Large Hadron Collider, isn't it? And, uh, yes, he's upset female scientists and... Womankind. Uh, one of his claims is that Oxford University has lengthened its science exams by 15 minutes specifically to help women. Why is this so shocking? Because it, it's not true? No, because it is true. Oh. According to The Telegraph, students taking maths and computer science examinations in the summer of 2017 were given an extra 15 minutes to complete their papers after Don's ruled that female candidates might be more likely to be adversely affected by time pressure. Have we got much longer? I'm feeling a bit faint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up to get more paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Italian scientist who told a group of female physicists that physics was invented by men. Professor Anne Christine Davis, a physicist at Cambridge University, said, I just don't know what planet he lives on. <laughs> I'm afraid he'd rather played right into his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so time now for the odd one out round. Uh, it's just one between you this week. Your four are Dominic Raab, Sir Walter Rawley, Weight Watchers and Kanye West. Kanye West has changed his name to Yee. Yes. Y -E -E. Yes. Uh, weight Watchers, uh, as I think they've lost the weight, haven't they? Uh, no pun intended. Haven't they taken the weight out of their name, just called themselves Watchers now? So that must be the root of the odd one outness. Yeah. Um, so it's between Walter Raleigh and uh, Dominic Raab. Is that his name? Raab seems like it might be a different name that's become Ra. No. Well, Kanye has gone to Shorten, short, so they? shortened names. And weight Raleigh lengthened his name. Because it, it was uh, Rally and then Raleigh, or Rawley as you pronounce it. Sir, Rawley. he added the sir. Yeah. And then he invented. <laughs> just, just after. He wasn't born Sir Walter Raleigh. No. You're right. right. He, he made it longer. <laughs> no, he, he, made, he would occasionally go by water sometimes. He would drop the L. Really? Water? Water. Yeah. water. So three of them have shortened their names, so Dominic Raab has lengthened his name. Yeah, how has he lengthened He's added an A. Well, he was you're getting there. Rab. And now he's Rob, and soon he's going to be a Rob. Well, actually, <laughs> they have all made their names shorter, except Rob, who had his name made longer by his staff. According to the London Review of Books, Rob's team would add extra A's in the middle of his surname to see how many they could get away with. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. Do you know what the, do you know what the record was? 48,000. <laughs> Five. Five? Five? So his name read Dominic Rob. <laughs> Kanye West, you're absolutely right, has yeah. shortened his name this week. He wants to be known hereafter as Ye. Ye. Is it Ye? Oh, Ye. Ye. Is it like a... How have Weight Watchers shortened their name? WW. Yeah. They've w gone to WW. Yeah. 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 And it's about it's wellness fun. now. Yes, about well -being. It's not about being fat yes. or thin. No. It's about being well, well in a kind well. of thin way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm, I'm just saying. 
I mean, you don't go along and they, they just don't mention it. No. <laughs> no. Would you like to get on the scales and see how well you are? <laughs> They've all made their names shorter, except for Dominic Raab, who's had his name made longer by his staff. Referring to the ongoing negotiations with Brussels, Brexit Minister Dominic Raab warned conference delegates we're being sucked into an indefinite limbo, <laughs> which is, of course, where Jacob Rees-Mogg believes all unbaptised children end up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Organ. Doesn't print many copies, but has a huge circulation. That's because after they've read it, most people donate their organ to someone else. <laughs> and we start with Winston Churchill would spend £80 a year on what? Was it broadband contract he really needs to cancel? <laughs> Cigars. Ubers. Boiler suits. T-shirts. Women's underwear. Pies. <laughs> Nazi memorabilia. Shoes. <laughs> Silk pants. Yes, pants. Silk pants. Absolutely. Silk pants. Winston Churchill would spend eighty pounds a year on silk underwear. I never Win knew that. Winston Churchill gained access to all the silk underwear he needed when, in 1942, codebreakers at Bletchley Park cracked Victoria's Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Next, a very warm what found in St Albans? Organ. Got to be. A well very warm cut. and comforted and tuneful organ. A very warm welcome to the International Organ Festival. Oh. The St Albans International Organ Festival is a major undertaking. They've pulled out all the stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for that. There we are. It was uh, a long day in the writer's room, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we got to this guy, that'll do. Uh, Paul Josh. <laughs> all good, yeah. Quite that all good. Here. Pull out the stop, no. <laughs> How do I get home from here? <laughs> Kindly Jenna lied about trying what with what for the first time. Ant with deck. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's milk with cereal. Yes. About trying cereal with milk for the first time. Coincidentally, snap, crackle and pop are the noises the various Kardashians implants make when they all sit down for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, police brand what? Absolute madness. Their favourite album. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. It's trying to catch criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Police brand, man driving car filled with tree branches. Absolute oh, man. Yes. This is a man in Stockport who was stopped by police driving this. <laughs> the driver had been clearing up garden rubbish and asked for several other fences to be taken into consideration. <laughs> so the final scores are absolutely tied. Paul and Josh, Ian and Naga all on seven. But before we go, there is just time for the caption competition. Is he going... And you're sure that's Tony Blair that's tied to the rails in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> Next. There's always a thick person in every class. <laughs> And I leave you with news that, in London, news spreads of how much Boris Johnson stands to lose in his divorce settlement... <laughs> in Washington, Melania Trump is reassured that the Perspex screen she installed is well worth the money. <laughs> and in Munich, as a VIP visits a kindergarten, it looks like little Gunter, the teddy monitor, may have some explaining to do. <laughs> Good night. Reading the news can make you a little irate. Join Jonathan Pye back in the studio, available now from BBC Three on BBC iPlayer. The next a hypnotist has Agnes under his spell, Mrs Brown's boys, in a moment. People need help and never refuse. Come on, gang. Let's get a shift on. Listen, it's Exodus.